Paying for clicks in your Google Ads campaign and then getting no conversions is honestly the most frustrating thing that can happen when you're running Google Ads, especially if you're a small business because Google Ads, as we know, is a massive company and they don't need any extra donations because if you're running Google Ads and not getting any conversions, you are just simply donating or giving money away to Google, which is not what we want. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna take you through the exact five-step process that I run through on any account that I'm doing an audit on if the business owner or the Google Ads specialist lets me know that this conversion is getting no conversions. And the very, very first important step is that I need to find out is the issue of no conversions isolated to only Google Ads or is this site widened? And what I mean by that is that is the business getting any conversions at all? Or is the issue with no conversions only affecting the Google Ads campaign. So what we wanna do first is we wanna go into Google Analytics 4 or any sort of data reporting system that they have where you can see the conversion tracking across the different sources of traffic. And what we wanted to confirm here is the issue of no conversions. We know it's not converting from Google Ads, but are they just getting no conversions at all? So we can go through and check and see what's happening with any of their social media campaigns. Let's go through, have a look at with any organic traffic or direct traffic that they're getting. And the reason for why we wanna know this, because if it is the case that it's only their Google Ads, which is not converting, so they're getting no conversions from Google Ads, but they might be getting some great conversions from social media campaigns or their organic listings. If that is the case, we then know the problem will generally lie in their keyword targeting or their ad targeting and their ad creatives. Whereas if they're not getting any conversions at all, we know that the problem is bigger than just Google Ads alone. So not only do we have to go through and have a look at their targeting and their ad copy, but we'd also additionally wanna go through and have a look at their landing pages and their offers. So this first step is all about just finding out what we're dealing with. Are we dealing with a problem that only has got to do with Google Ads or is the problem much bigger than that? So once we've worked that out, the next thing that we wanna go through and have a look at is the targeting of their ads. And as I said, this is especially true if they're getting conversions through other traffic sources, but it's just Google ads, which is not converting. What we want to be having a look at is we want to go through and have a look at, are they spinning the ads on the right type of keywords? But further than that, you know, are they targeting the right locations? Are they targeting the right audiences and demographics? And are they targeting the right placements? Now, if this is something that you are facing, and because we're really looking at the targeting, and then we are, we'll be going looking at the ad copy. So let's jump into a screen share so I can show you where you go through through into Google Ads to find out and really review the targeting of your ads. And the steps that I'm about to show you is actually part of my Google Ads optimization checklist, which is a checklist which takes you through not only all the optimization actions that you need to complete, also lets you know how often they need to be completed. And this has been updated for all of the different types of Google Ads campaigns. So search, shopping, performance max, display, video, and even demand gen. And if you wanna get a copy to my Google Ads optimization checklist, just follow that link in the description below. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the process of reviewing your search terms and also your locations. And we'll mainly do this for our search and shopping campaigns. So when you're inside a search campaign, where you wanna go is you wanna go into your insights and reports and then into your search terms. So the difference between your search terms and your keywords, just in case if you are new to the world of Google Ads, so the keywords are the keywords which you've entered in that you're saying Google target these keywords, whereas the search terms are the actual terms that the user has used that has triggered your ad. So the first thing you wanna go through is you wanna go down and just really look to see, are there any search terms which are not relevant to your product? Now you'll see that these search terms are blurred out because I've had to keep some privacy for the client, but the main thing that you really wanna be looking at is you wanna be looking at these search terms and are they relevant to your product or service? So if you see a search term which is not relevant and you also can go through and have a look at the clicks, impressions and conversions and you're seeing that it's not converting, and it's not bringing any business, that's when you go through and add it in as a negative keyword. So what you do go through and you do wanna go through and have a look at, let's just have a look. I'll just rank this down by the cost per conversion. And what I'm looking at through here is, you know, I'd start to go through and have a look at it and you go, am I happy with this conversion metric? Which yes, we are. There are some others down here where we may go, look, these ones just aren't really relevant. We're spending quite a bit of money on them and then you can add it in as a negative keyword. In terms of people always asking you know, how much do you spend? It really comes down to the business. So it really comes down to what the business is spending, you know, how aggressive they want to be in certain terms. But really what you want to be looking at is you want to go through and just check, are there any search terms which are not relevant? If they are, you select them 
and then you add them in as a negative keyword. Now, that is the same process for search or shopping. So I just showed you how to do that in a search campaign. In a shopping campaign, you go into the same section. So you go back into the shopping campaign and then search terms and then you go from there. Let's jump back into a search campaign because the other thing I do want to let you know about is just a little bit about your keyword structure. So you can see through here, the way that we set up this campaign is we initially had five different keyword themes, but where we came down into it is that really there's only this top keyword theme was converting and that's why we eventually paused all of these other ad groups. And then inside of our actual ad groups, now for this one, I usually only like to have two or three different broad match keywords. We do have a fourth one because this one, it all still fits within the same theme. And what you're really wanting to be thinking about here is with the keywords that you've got in your ad group, are those keywords still relevant to the ad copy and the landing page? And in this case it was, but one thing I will just let you know is that what we've also done is you'll notice with these broad match keywords, they're all longer tail broad match keywords. So I really try and steer away from broad match keywords with only two words on it. Generally, I have a rule to have no more than three, but I do like to have four or five because Google's really focused on the meaning of that keyword, not just the keywords within that phrase. And then we build out our exact match keyword list. The benefit of going around and doing it this way is that what we can do is we're using these broad match keywords to really start to bring in some new type of traffic. And then we can really see the individual keyword data with these exact match keywords. We also use dynamic keyword insertion, which helps there. So there's a couple of extra things that we're looking at doing, but the main thing I really want you to focus in on is to try and probably steer away from two or three word broad match keywords. So that's how we go through and review the keywords. The second thing I wanna take you through is reviewing the locations. And you will find the locations data underneath audiences, keywords, and content. And you can see your locations in here. Now, when you go through and select locations, you'll see this for all the different types of campaigns. If we say, we just wanna review this on the Performance Max campaign, you'll generally see it by the way that you've targeted that product. Now, for this one, we're targeting the whole of United States. That's why we're seeing it there. But if we click on the country, we can then go to states or counties or regions. Let's go down to states. And what we're looking at through here is we're just making sure that where we're spending the most amount of money, we are also getting relevant conversions. Now, I will say for performance max or smart conversion-based bidding, so maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, as long as you've got enough conversion data in your account, Google will generally spend the money where it's getting the most conversions. So if you're using a maximized conversion setting, you don't really have to go through and check this as often. But the reason why I still recommend that you go through and check it is because what you really want to be going through and checking when you go into your locations is you just want to make sure that you are targeting the right location. So you can see here we're only targeting the United States and all of our clicks over this period have come in from the United States. Where you can run into a problem and the way that you do that on any campaign, just when you're seeing the campaign through here, go over to this little gear icon. When you've got your location set up, go into location options and you can see here that we've got it selected as presence only. By default, Google will select it over to presence or interest and that's where you can run into the problem, especially with conversion-based bidding where Google will go through and target people outside of your targeted area. Now, you may not want to target people in other countries for shipping or just not being able to provide the service in those areas. So that's why you make sure that you are only on presence. All right, so after you've gone through and really worked out whether this problem is only affecting your Google Ads campaigns or whether it's store wide or site wide, you've then gone through and reviewed the targeting of your ad. So looking at the traffic, which you're paying for by each of those clicks, you next want to go through and have a look at your ad copy. And this is where a lot of the things can start to fall down. One of the biggest mistakes I do see with ad copy is that people try to get the sale straight away in the ad. The way that you want to be thinking about your ad copy is you want to be moving people along a step and every step they're getting closer to that conversion action. So for example, they search a keyword, they see your ad, the first step is to get them to click on your ad. So you have to have an engaging ad, but they're not in the sales process yet. Then you wanna get them to go to your landing page. You wanna get them to be engaged with your heading, engaged with your subheading, and then go down and read more about your products or services. Because the reality is the longer that they spend on your page, it's more likely that they are going to convert. So a big problem that I do see with Google ads is that people just focus on keyword targeting and then a buy now or call now. Where with your ad copy, you wanna be more nuanced with that and you really wanna start start really giving them reasons in order to further engage with your product or service so that you can get that conversion. When it comes to ad copy, what I generally find is that people just focus on this. And this is what I call what Google likes, where they have a big keyword focus in the ad copy. And there's nothing wrong with having a keyword focus in your ad copy. In fact, it's something that you do want to have. And the reason for that is because it does help with your click-through ratio because you want people to see the exact term or a very similar term to what they've actually searched in your ad 
copy. So if you're advertising a service about air conditioning cleaning, you want them to see just not the word air conditioning, but you want them to see the word air conditioning cleaning. It really affirms to them that your ad is relevant to their search inquiry. But unfortunately, if you only focus on what Google likes, you will generally get the click, but you won't get the conversion. And this is where a lot of ad copy falls down is that you need to have a strong call to action. And I'm gonna give you some further details about this, but too many people just think a strong call to action is buy now or we've got a sale on now. You need to get more specific than that. And the way that I want you to frame this is thinking about saying things that your competitors can't or won't say. We will explain that a little bit further because the second thing you also wanna do is you wanna be making sure that you're using emotional triggers. And this could be anything from fear of missing out, so a limited time sale. If you can actually get some curiosity or even make them laugh, you really want to be pulling on those emotional triggers, remembering that people make a purchase because they're wanting to either avoid pain or there's something that they want to obtain. So it's really that pain or desire which you're wanting to really highlight in your ads. What I want you to think about with your ad copy is that you're wanting to do two things. Firstly, you are wanting to grab their attention, but you're also wanting to prepare them for what you want them to do next when they actually get to your website. What I've always found with my best performing ads, it really comes down to this. They say something that competitors can't say, and they also avoid generic terms like we're number one or save now. A big golden rule of mine when it comes to writing ad copy for Google Ads is I never just want to use those terms of number one carpet cleaning service or number one travel agent or we're number one or we're the best. What you want to be using, as I said before, you want to say something that other people can't say or you want to say something they are not saying. So let's firstly focus on say something that people can't say. So what you really want to dive into here is if you're writing the Google Ads for your own business, you should acutely know what is the one thing that makes your service or your product unique to other people, or if you're a Google Ads specialist or a digital agency, rather than just you know writing generic ad copy, you really wanna spend some important time really questioning the customer or the client on what makes your product unique. And really asking those questions, you know, why should we choose your service versus your competitors? And you wanna start conveying that into your ad copy. Some great examples I've had of this is that we had a client that were first to the market, then a whole heap of cheaper imitations came in. And the way that we combated that is that in their ad copy, we pointed out because this was a safety product that involved children's hearing, we made it very, very clear that this was the only product and it's still the only product on the market that meets both the EU and the USA hearing standards. So that was a clear difference between them and their competitors. Now, if you're running a local service like waste renewal or plumbing, and you know there may not be a large range of differences in terms of prices, or you may not be able to prove a high level of service quality, what I've really found works well is to individualize the service. So a great way of doing that is using your name in the ad copy. So rather than just a call now, it could be something like call Jason now or call Sally now, whatever that message needs to be. So when it comes to your ad copy, it's not just about getting the click, it's about inviting them to engage further with your business because the longer we can keep them on your landing page or the more aligned we can get them with your message, there's a lot of great a chance that they are going to convert. And obviously underlying all of that, you always wanna be making sure that you're running active ad copy split tests to find out which messaging works best for your business. So now that we've reviewed their targeting, we've also reviewed the ad copy, the next part comes to the landing page. And what you really wanna make sure is as soon as they land on that landing page, you wanna make sure that it's highly relevant to their initial search. And this is all about thinking about the customer's journey. They may have never heard of your brand, but they've completed a search, they've seen your ad, and then they've landed on their, your initial landing page. And you wanna make sure that is as highly relevant as possible to their initial search query. In many cases, you won't be sending people to your homepage. What you wanna be thinking about is you wanna be making sure that the page they're getting on is gonna really reassure them that they are in the right place, that they are in the right part of the big wild internet that is gonna be specific to their current needs. Now, an Australian-based user testing company called Testmate has done well over 10,000 real-life user test cases looking at landing pages, studying the journey from a user coming in from a paid ad down into an individual landing page. And they were able to whittle it down to five core elements that your landing page needs in order to be considered a high converting landing page. Once again, this is all backed by user testing data. And the first one is, is that as soon as they land on that page, you need to have a real clear messaging of what it is you're selling or what problem you solve, what your service is. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this before, you go onto a website and you're just lost. You're like, I have no idea what I'm doing here and I don't know what this company is trying to sell me. So remembering going back to that user's initial search query, you wanna make it really, really clear that they're in the right place and you're really kind of helping them really understand that, hey, 
you're in the right place, we can help with your problem. Second thing, just simple design and something that is a clean design. Now, some people go over the top with their websites. What I want you to think about here is it just needs to be something that is not too messy. And what I mean by that is that many times when it comes to landing pages, less is more. You do need to give the core amounts of data that you need, but you wanna have one core theme. You don't wanna give them three different conversion options. You wanna have a really clear process. Remember, we're moving them one step at a time from that initial inquiry to a conversion. The next thing they found is that you need to have very clear authority markers. Remembering, they may have never heard of you or your business before. So having some testimonials or different awards that you've won gives them that peace of mind. They also pointed out that you need to be able to remove any elements of fear. So that could be things like your return policy, money back guarantees. And then finally, you just need a really, really clear and easy checkout process. Now, another thing that I'd like to point out here is that many people think that you need to make massive amounts of changes and it needs a full website redesign. In many cases, what we've found is that it's more just about using simple little changes that can make the big difference in terms of your landing page performance. And then this brings us to the last element, which is your offer. When it comes to your offer, many people think that the only way that you can improve your offer is by offering a sale or reducing your price. And that's not actually true. What you really wanna be doing here is you just wanna be making sure that your brand story and the nature of your business aligns with your offer. Now, because this is such a massive topic and we've also just come off the massive topic of landing pages, what I wanna do is to help you extra I'm going to let you know where you can watch some extra interviews that I've had with industry experts that talk about these two issues. So thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. Remember, if you want to get access to my Google Ads Optimization Checklist, follow that link in the description below. But right now, if you want to continue the learning and see an interview that I did with Isaac from Adventure Media, where we talk about your ad copy messaging and really moving people through the story process and really talking about storytelling within your ad copy, go through and watch this video right here. Or if you'd like to see some extra information about that user testing data on how you can improve your landing pages, go through and watch this interview with Richard from Testmate right here. Thanks again. See you next time.